Hello everyone. So yeah, yesterday I've created a new backtesting package for you guys. So what I'm planning to do today is to share with you how to work with this backtesting package. So let's uh, do a simple buy and hold strategy, right? So you guys know buy the S&P 500, hold it for 10 years and you'll be in profit. And the question is, does it work? And we can actually test that. Uh, so the fact that we can test strategies gives us more confidence that they're going to perform in the future. We can just copy our template and we call it buy and hold SP500. We will extract the data for the S&P 500. And on Tickmill, I think the simple name is US500. So let's extract data from the US500. And I'm not sure how much uh, historical data they have, but I'll try to extract it from 2015 and see if I get any, anything, right? Of course, I don't have this indicator calculated right now, and I have to also import the strategies. Okay, so we have imported data for the S&P 500 since 2015. Um, let me try, you know, have some more data set. I, I'm not sure, sometimes brokers, they don't have that much data, so you'd have to extract from other sources, but here we see that we have data since 2013, which is actually great. Okay, so now I have a lot of data imported in my PC, so my PC might be frying. Let me actually reset my internal notebook. Sometimes when you work with uh, PyCharm Jupyter, uh, your PC can get very slow, but a simple restart should fix everything. So as I said, uh, yeah, we wanted to backtest a buy and hold strategy on the S&P 500. And so this is the pressure for the S&P 500. As you can see, um, if you'd be holding S&P 500 since 2014, uh, you'd be... I won't say pretty rich, depends on how much you invest, but you definitely make some profit. And something people don't realize is it is actually a very good thing to invest uh, regularly, right? So sometimes they tell you, okay, every month, leave some money aside. So what I'm going to show you today is a buy and hold strategy where you're going to invest, let's say 200 US dollars, if that's what you have left over after your salary or where, wherever you're working, we're going to invest 200 US dollars every month into the SP 500 and hold it. And then we're gonna see how much we're actually going to make uh, at the end of that period. So uh, to create a buy and hold strategy, uh, so our signal function is uh, we have to create a buy position uh, every first day of the month. And to do that, um, we can actually check, uh, for example, buy on the first day of the month, I would say. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my OHLC data set, right? So I'm going to take OHLC. Uh, so I'm going to create OHLC by month is equal to OHLC dot group by month. And then we just take the first value. And of course I have to create the month column my OHLC data set, so OHLC.month is equal to OHLC time dot dt dot month to extract the month column. Right, so we computed the month column. So now we see, for example, yeah, it's August. So here we have the month column. And what this group by does is we are here, see that, taking the first value of every month, right? So here, this is the first day of January, February, March, and so on. So for every month, we have the day, right? Where we can actually buy. And so what we are going to do now is we are going to take the time column, right? And save it into a list. So these are the days where we're buying the S&P 500. So I see by, by month time, and we, are, we will convert that to a list. See that? So here, these are timestamps where we want to invest into the S&P 500. So on these days, we are going to, yeah, just buy it and hold it. So if time in days to buy, so we're doing list comprehension here, right? Return buy. I assume this is not the perfect way to code it, but uh, I just want to get done with so you guys can see the results. All right, so see, so here, so this is the first day of month in our data frame, we're buying. 
let's look 30 days later, we're buying again. So now the signal function is ready. We're buying every month, you go to work, you get a salary, uh, you save $200 in savings and decide to invest it into the S&P 500. So what we need to do is we need to calculate $200 S&P 500 worth, uh, right? So for example, if we buy in July 2013, S&P 500 cost $1,600. So to get 200, you need about one divided by eight S&P contracts. And to do that, uh, we just, I think what we need to do is we need to take the current open price of the S&P 500 and we take 200 divided by the current contract price. And as a result, we get a smaller S&P contract, right? Uh, I'm not sure if the brokers, for example, accept such small contract sizes, but for example, if you invest in ETFs, for example, that should be possible. So this way we calculate the amount of contracts that would always amount to $200 at that point in time. So we have no exit strategy, we just buy and hold. So we will exit at the end of the backtest. So let's say that we decide to um, just sell it today. So if data signal is equal to buy, and I don't care how many open trades we have, we just buy whenever our signals tells us to buy, which is every month, we just buy. And then we hope. Okay, in this case, we're just investing, right? So star starting balance doesn't make any sense here. But here, let's say the commission to buy the S&P 500 is, uh, let's just say minus $1, for example, right? So let's run the back this. Hmm, this is strange because we only opened 12 trades. There are 12 months in a year, but I want 12 months of every year, right? So what it means is that I have to take the year and the month for, for the backtest. You also need to compute the year. And then we group by the year and the month. So it just took the first 12 months for the backtest, but we want it through the entire period. So now, if I check this, we have many more months to invest. So here we have our signal, right? Now we have 3,100 3, rows. Let's run this on bar function. Let's run the back test. And we see that we've opened 145 trades for the S&P investment. So if you invested $200 every month, since the year 2000 and when to start back this 13 right you would have made about 31000 in profits right and here we check the back this fix oh and right i don't have this indicator every month you've invested and up to this point you would have sold everything so this is what it would look like and if you just hold trades, this is that. The advantage is there is no trading margin. You can't get stopped out. You're just holding that. Uh, so you're using time as your biggest leverage to uh, to make money. But in my opinion, being able to backtest this and see the results for yourself uh, allows you to you know research and uh, analyze many other strategies. And I myself, right? Buying and holding is quite boring. You just invest. So in my free time, I, I like to you know spend time looking for maybe some intraday strategies, swing trading strategies, uh, looking at uh, you know edges uh, where, for example, others don't have made enough research yet. So I think that is the interesting part of algo trading: looking for things. And when you find something interesting, I think that's the very re rewarding part of you know doing doing that. Especially if you have no emotions, you have trading bots and we're just looking and observing.